Hey, everybody, it's Tommy Canale, and welcome back to Before the Lights Podcast, the show that tells you how they made their mark. He was scammed out of $75,000 and kicked out of sports betting platforms in less than 30 days. He then created an AI sports data program that predicts winners at a higher rate than other podiums. Let's welcome in Steve Westfield. Steve, welcome to the show. Hey, good to be here. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. The sports betting is in this huge global boom. What is your thought of how this thing is exploding with sports betting? I don't think there's any end in sight to the growth. Uh, I, I've, I think one of the biggest things that's happened is when, when the leagues kind of started to get in bed with the gambling companies, I think that's when it really started to get steam. And they've been walking this kind of fine line for a while where there's these question marks about, well, are you going to have officials, you know, tainting the outcome of a game or are you going to have point shaving or even players starting, starting to monkey with things. And at some point the league decided that if, if sports betting's legal, then they're going to get way more eyeballs on, on games that they normally wouldn't have. And then they decided to get in bed, bed with these guys. And it's just created this snowball effect that I, I don't see there's any end in sight. It's gotten farther than I ever thought. I mean, I never thought that I'd see the day that you could actually have a kiosk at a arena or a baseball field in not only your phone, but you can actually get a kiosk on a concourse at a field to go place a bet. I never thought I'd see those days. Yeah, it's it's wild and it's so easy. I mean, I, I think back to, you know, it, it's it's fun, but it's a little bit of a pain to have to get up and go to a casino and drive there and, you know, look, look through the sheet and place your wagers kind of the old fashioned way. And nowadays you literally just unlock your phone and you have all of the lines real time right there. A couple presses of a button. Um, It's super convenient, which is also dangerous too, because it, it is, you know, obviously there's addictive personality pieces that come with gambling that can start to get into, get you into trouble. And so, uh, it's, it's a good and bad thing. I think yourself, you were scammed out of 75 K by a sports handicapper. So my question to you is why didn't you stop way before 75,000? (laughs) Uh, yeah, great question. (laughs) Um, you know, one of, one of my flaws, I <laughs> was telling somebody the other, the other day, one time I went into the mall to buy a pair of socks and I walked out with a water bottle and a year's supply of hand salt to the Dead Sea. <laughs> and you, you look at that and you're like, what, what the heck were you thinking? And I am <laughs> like, one of my flaws is I can be kind of manipulated if somebody's got a really good sales pitch. And this guy at one of the kiosks in the middle of the mall is like, hey, you you've got nice shoes on. Uh, can I, can I show you something? And he had me wash my hands in the bowl with, with this dead sea salt and the water just turns black. And he's like, you've got all this dead skin and on and on and on. And before you know it, it's $130 and then it's $60. And then it's, you know, it's the whole kit and caboodle until I walk out of there with something that I don't need and never used and didn't even get what I came for. And th- the same thing happened basically when I, when I kind of discovered sports handicapping or got into it, is I found this firm and they, they hit me at the perfect time as far as their win streak went, because it, it wasn't just, Hey, you pay this amount up front. It was, we have these really um, lofty promises about how good our, our sports picks are. And we will let you in for, I think it was a couple thousand dollars and you can just kind of try it out and see for yourself so I did that for six weeks or eight weeks, and it was awesome. Their <laughs> their sports picks were hitting. Uh, I I don't remember the percentage, probably over north of sixty percent of the time, which against the spread is really good. And it continued, and I was making money. And they probably haven't had a streak like that in their history, but I came in at just the perfect stake in time. And they leveraged it and they used high pressure sales tactics. And I got to the end of it and I had made a bunch of money. I had already made my original investment back. And that's when they did the upsell. And they're like, hey, we've got this next step program. 
It's about $70,000. You pay for a full year in advance. You get even more premier picks than you've got. There's only a few dozen people in, in the country that have access to these and the, the whole story and the whole thing. And there's, you know, it's expiring today and on and on and on. And I looked at, looked at my past results and I said, well, I've made a lot of money doing this. And then I looked at, at the win percentages they were claiming. And I did all the math to figure out how long it would take for me to win my investment back. And I was like, all right, that, you know, this is a no brainer. And I was skeptical at first and, but I, you know, I've, I've been making money, so let's do it. And, uh, fast forward a year, it, it was not even close to his promise. <laughs> it was in a totally another world from, from the, the promises they had made. It was, it was total junk, honestly. And I, um, I was like, I got to figure out a way to get my stinking money back because these knuckleheads are not going to do it for me. And, and, and I was like, plus I can do this better than them. I can make a, 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 an algorithm that is better at picking games than these guys. So I did. And I, I started coding and I started researching and I started learning all of these nuances about sports handicapping and dumping into this algorithm. And um, it, it's now become what, what, what we have today as, as leads AI. Um, but ra- roundabout way to say it was a, it was a ride to get where I'm at. <laughs> How, where did the getting banned from sports books come from? Did that was that tied in with that too? Yeah, I um, that was actually um, some of my own strategy, my own strategies, and and some of the algorithms. So, I, I if I sold all of my strategies, um, everyone would use them, and they wouldn't. When people put money on lines, the lines start to move. And it kind of wipes out the advantage. So if I sold all of them to the public, I wouldn't have any advantage myself. Mm-hmm. But long story short, I, um, I I had one nuancy method. And all I'll say is that it's it's around basketball. And um, I started winning and winning and winning. And the the sports books, they they technically don't ban you. They they just limit the amount you can wager. So it started, I could wager, you know, four or $5,000 a game. And then it went down to a thousand and then it went down to a hundred and then it went down to like 15 or $10. And then it went down to like a dollar. And it, you know, obviously at, at, a, at a dollar, a wager, it's not worth my time to even pay attention to it. They're a nice way of saying, we don't want you here anymore. Which drives me nuts because they will absolutely <laughs> take every cent that you have if you're a loser. But as soon as you start winning from them, they're like, nope, see you later. Do you think sports handicappers are legit or no? No, I think that 99% of them are total quacks who will lie, cheat and steal to make a buck. And and that's one of the things that we battle with as a company every day is, is people um, – just not trusting what we're saying, not trusting the industry and rightfully so. I mean, I, you know, I'm a victim too of a crooked stinking industry. And so we set out to try to be incredibly transparent with, with our algorithm. We, we publish every single past result that it's had going back over a year. So people could see exactly how good it is and how good it isn't at certain things. Um, not to mention that the algorithm takes the emotion and the human bias out of making, making um, sports predictions. So it's a lot more consistent, whether it's good or bad, it's a lot more consistent than a human handicapper might be. But yeah, I think, I think most, mostly the industry is crooked as you can imagine. And, and we're, we have to battle that every day. You stated that you started developing and coding and to get the knowledge to do the AI, to make your sports betting platform. Isn't AI though, only as good as the data that's inputted into it. Absolutely. Yep. And, and the training method as well, because, um, the, you, you know, you can have a really good set of data, but if you don't know how to train it right, or if you don't know how to set the weights, right, or, or look at, uh, the, the different kind of knobs to train the thing properly, it's, it's worthless as well. So I would say data and training are both incredibly valuable going into a good algorithm. Is yours then based on player or team dynamics? Team dynamics. Um, the, the main reason that we do that is because, uh, it, it's more predictable. I mean, players can have a good day or a bad day. A lot of these games I watch, um, you know, you'll have a knucklehead that, that just has a terrible off night and it's, or, or they'll have an amazing night, but typically the team tends to average things out much more consistently across five guys or 11 guys or, or nine guys. 
than a single player uh, does. And so we try to uh, try to avoid individual player stuff. We've had a lot of requests for player props and that type of stuff. And I know there's, there's money to be made there, but we, we found that team dynamics tend to average out much more across uh, more samples than just one person. It was launched in 2021, leans.ai, folks. Put a link in the show notes for you. It's L-E-A-N-S dot A-I. They call it Remy. It has a 58% win percentage. Remy's gone 28 and 3, but he's also gone 2 and 11. So <laughs> do you get some people that are skeptical of going, well, which Remy am I going to get? Yeah, well, that's one of the things that we we spend a lot of time trying to figure out is why is Remy so streaky? And I've I've seen those streaks and it's amazing when it's winning and it sucks when it's losing. Um, and and one of the things that we've done, though, too, which is different than a lot of sports handicappers, is you can sign up for our service for a 30 day free trial and get full access to see everything that that Remy provides, how Remy works, how the percentages work and all that stuff. And just see, and if it's for, you know, if you like it, great. If you don't, great. Find, go, you know, go find somewhere else. We're not asking for thousands of dollars up front. But that stinking algorithm, I, we're, you know, over time, I think we'll start to see it level out a little more as it learns from itself. And, and you know, there's an infinite amount of, of data you can put into the thing and, and ways you can put it recursively back on itself to learn from its own trends and its own whatever. And it, it the, it's infinite how to, how to grow it. But right now, Remy is super streaky and we don't know why other than that. That's the fact that it is. And it's we're as, as a business, we are definitely looking for more long-term clients because, you know, when you're looking at, at bets against the spread or over under um, you are losing a lot. And, and we always say, if you're losing 45% of the time, you are doing fantastic but you're still losing, you know, you're losing 45% of the time and there's all the emotional baggage that, that goes with that. Uh, but I, I don't know, man, I think some of it too is, is just predictive analytics. I mean, you know, when you put human behavior inside of a, of a time, you know, a time limit, like you would have in a game, and then you put it inside of a confined boundary, and then you put it inside of a set of, of rules where you have officials enforcing those rules, human behavior tends to be quite repeatable o- over time. And that's one of the advantages that we have, but at the same time, humans are crazy and they do wild things. And, and, you know, like we talked about, people can have an amazing night and a terrible night and that all plays into it. And so it's, it, it is the wild West sometimes, but over the long term, things tend to average out into something that, that wins more often than not. For you listeners that may not be up to speed on some of the things we're talking about in sports betting world, when we're talking about against the spread, that means that one team is favored over another team by a certain number of points. And I'll just say for conversation speak, it's three points. So team A is favored by team B by three points. And if you bet team A, they need to win by four or more for you to win the bet. And if you take team B and they lose by less than three, then you win the bet. So that's what we're talking about with the spread over under is the total number of points combined by each team. So in football, if the over under is 60 and that means the end of the game, the final score, both you add them up and it's either over or under 60 and you can bet them as well. So that's what we're talking about with the spread and over under Steve back to you at 58%, which is a pretty good clip for sports betting. Why don't you just keep this for yourself and not sell Remy's picks? Yeah, that's actually a great question. We get that a lot. So the, uh, the biggest challenge that we've, we've had is that at some point you run out of sports books to blacklist you. And so when I, I've got, I've gotten banned personally from three or I, I banned is not the right word. I can only bet like a dollar <laughs> at three sports books. Um, technically, I guess I would guess I have an account there, but um, for, for all intents and purposes, blacklisted from, from, from three sports books, I was like, I can continue down this road. And at some point I'm just going to run out. Like, you know, some of them um, might be six months. Some of them might be two months. Some of them might be three or four years before you get a hot enough streak. But at some point, like they're in a they're in a business to make profit, and so they they see what you're betting, they see what you're wagering, and if you're consistently winning more than not and just skimming that profit off, 
then they are going to limit you. And at some point you run out of sports books. And so I started looking big picture and I was like, man, I could try to, to make a living at this and, and do the whole thing. But at some point, whether it's a year or two or three or five down the road, I'm going to run out of sports books and that's it. And that's the end of it. And so um, we decided to, to, to make this algorithm and, and sell it to people. And um, that that's proven as a, as a good revenue stream as well. Do people technically say that your site's just another ha- way of handicapping? Probably, probably. I think so. I mean, it, it's really interesting because we have spent thousands of dollars with our lawyers uh, positioning us as, as data guys and not gamblers. Mm. So we, we provide exact precise, you know, down to the 10th of a percent win probabilities on games and, and cover probabilities of a team covering a spread or not. And then we give that data to people. We assign units for people who run, who really want to get into the minutia of it, which is, it's just a mathematical formula based off the Kelly criterion that, that um, it is a way to assign win probability and payout odds in, into this common thing in the handicapping industry called units. But then we send that to people and they can do whatever the squat they want with it. They can, um, use it. They cannot use it. A lot of our most successful clients are using multiple handicapping services and they're just filtering in what we're sending against what other people are sending as well. And so they might have three or four or eight or 12 handicapping services and they combine all that together into their own strategies. And so we, we don't, there's a lot of handicapping services that will tell you exactly what dollar amount to bet on what game and um, we've tried to stay away from that because we're, we're very much more on the, the sports analytics, data analytics, predictive analytics side. And so we just we have this algorithm that's pretty good. It comes up with pretty good metrics. We kick it out to our user base and then they can do whatever they want with it. When you start talking about sports betting and people that are done it their whole life, I mean, obviously, the name Billy Walters is going to surface up pretty quick. He just wrote a book called The Gambler which I cannot recommend enough. If you haven't got it, people, you need to get it and read it. But as you're talking about this, Stephen, I'm thinking about a part of the book where he was talking about his computer group. I mean, did you look into what Billy did and take any of that into what you're doing? I did not look into what he did, but I I did have a client who came over from the computer group. Okay. And um, we've kind of been going back and forth on, on, trading some ideas and just looking at, at different ways of doing things. Um, one of the things that it's good, it's good and bad. Um, it, and just a philosophy is we have, we have tried to make our own thing here because there's so much bias or potential for bias in looking at what other people have done that it can really start to skew things one way or another. And, and at the end of the day, my experience with the the sports handicapping market is that most of them are not good enough. They're not profitable. And so we've intentionally chosen not to look at, at the industry as a whole, just because a lot of them have, have just junk and it's just noise essentially. And we've, we've tried to focus most of our effort on just hard data, hard analytics, how things trend over, over time. um, And all of the nuances that go into, to training this algorithm uh, it's the approach we've taken, but, but yeah, that whole story is fascinating. Yes, it is. I got to tell you people, you got to read it and just get the book in your opinion. Then can one beat a sports book? I mean, I think if you win a dollar and walk away, you've beat a sports book, okay. right? Yeah. You're, I mean, you're, I, I in, the red. Dep- you're, in, it, you're in the black. Depends on, <laughs> yeah. It depends on your definition. Um, I, I think that, yeah, over a period of time. I mean, typ- typically you're not going to win more than f- what what I've seen is about 40,000, 40 to 50,000 dollars from a sports book before they will cut you off or they'll start to limit you unless if you get incredibly lucky on a, you know, a $1,000 eight team parlay, which is the stupidest possible bet you could make. Uh I you know, and it's essentially like winning a lotto ticket at that point. But beyond that, I, I I don't know what, what's your definition, I guess, of, of beating a sports book. I don't know if you can in my eyes, because I don't know somebody that's just going to go in there once and win and walk away. They're going to keep coming back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, or you're going to yep. make multiple bets in one day and you may start out the day, you know, 
in the hole, then you finish ahead, but the next day you're going to come back and you're going to lose it. So I don't know if you beat a sports book. I don't know anybody that has got won enough money to where a sports book is going. Okay. That person's beating us. I mean, the long run, I think you're going to lose. Yeah, I, uh, I would agree, especially if you have no strategy or a marginal strategy, I would totally agree. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, at the same time, I've had three sports books that have quote unquote said I beat them. In fact, one of them, it was so hilarious. They, I was in their VIP club and they, uh, they, uh, invited me and three of my friends to a, a basketball game, pro basketball game. And it was awesome. Like I've been to suites and this was a suite on steroids. It was, it was only four of us in the whole suite. And we had these giant, like huge comfy chairs that we were sitting in and like this chef back there cooking stuff and open bar <laughs> two days before we're supposed to go to the game. The, uh, I had started winning too much from this sports book and they ripped away my VIP status <laughs> and they took away all of my perks and they basically had started limit limiting me at that point. And so I emailed my rep and I was like, Hey, I was like, you know, all this stuff is starting to get taken away from me. Are we still good for the game on Tuesday? And he's like, Oh yeah, no problem. That's already set in stone. <laughs> so we awkwardly went to the game as they're, you know, starting to limit me from winning too much. And I talked with him. I was like, Hey, I was like, I cannot lose my money back to you. If you guys are going to limit me to $10 a bet, there's no way I'm going to do it. And he's like, Oh yeah, no, you know, no problem. I, I I've seen your record over the whole period of time. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to convince my guys that, that we're going to open you up and, and open up the caps and whatever. And, uh, about a week later, I sent him another email. I was like, Hey, I, I'm still capped at $10 a bet. What, you know, what's going on here. And I, I have not heard from him since. <laughs> <laughs> How does behavior then correlate with AI? Human behavior. Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, AI, I, I think one of the, it, it's a love hate, but one of the beauty, beautiful things about AI is it takes human emotion out of the equation, which is a good thing and a bad thing. And if I'm looking at a game and say that maybe I, w- I want to, I want to bet on the game and I know something about the teams, the first thing I'm going to do as a human is I'm going to pull on my own uh, history and my own experiences on what I think about this team, what I think about that team. Maybe I'll read a little article here or read an article there and I'll try to remember, um, you know, the last time I bet on this team in this situation, what happened and all of that's fallible. All of that has biases, whether it's a team I like or a team I don't like a coach. I like, I don't like a player. I like, or don't like that adds bias. My uh, inability to perfectly recollect my own memories and experiences creates bias. And then I don't have infinite memories or infinite experiences to give me a, a perfect memory on how I, I should inform this bet. So the whole process is, is written with, with bias in all kinds of different flavors. AI at, at a perfect AI takes all of that out. Now, obviously that presumes that you would have omniscience or you would have a, you know, AI that's got an infinite amount of data to pull from, which is not true. Like there's, there's always limits. On, and like you said earlier, it's AI is only as good as the data going into it, but it takes the human uh, emotion out of it. And so for what we're trying to do with sports betting and sports analytics, that's a beautiful thing. And what it can often do is, is it can do non-intuitive um types of, of results where, you know, maybe a, a player's injured and the, the sports betting market thinks that that's going to have it, an eight point effect on the game. And the AI is like, yeah, that player is really only worth two and a half points based on, on the replacement coming in and how that's going to affect the defense on the other team and all these other things. And now I've got a huge advantage on that line because of, of the emotional thought of how much a player matters versus what the algorithm says historically, how much they matter. So it, it it's the same, the same thing too, though, is, is when the AI is not omniscient, you've got to kind of try to read between the lines and figure out, is it right? Is it wrong? Is it, is it seeing something valid here or not? And that's, that's a huge challenge that we have of just trying to set the right uh, checks and filters in place. Uh, I, I don't know if you've played with chat GPT at all, but sometimes yeah. it just pukes out, 
trash, like mm-hmm. absolute trash. Sometimes it's really good, but you know, I've asked it questions and it's like, how in the world did you come up with it? There's nowhere on the web that even has anything like right. that. Um, so it, it's constantly back and forth of, of dealing with the AI that doesn't have emotion and also putting the right bounds on it to make sure that it's something useful. What sports in are best to bet in your eyes? 1000% basketball. Um, college, the reason why college or NBA, or it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, both of them have kind of different flavors, but the biggest reason is we, we call it score fidelity. I'm sure there's, there's other ways to, to kind of coin this, but it's the idea of the probability of a single scoring play changing the outcome of the event. So if you look at hockey, and you've got an over under line of five, call it five, which is low. Now I've, I've scored a sixth goal or one out of five has changed the outcome of that game. So that's like a 20% chance of a single scoring play changing the outcome of a game. Not to mention hockey's got all the bounces and fluky. You know, I hit, I hit the outside of the post or the inside of the post or ticked off a stick on the way in or all of these bouncy things, super random and, and not, not as repeatable as something like basketball. So basketball, let's say I have NBA, I've got an over underline of 230 or 235. And then I hit a three pointer. Well, that's like a 1.4% chance of a single scoring play changing the outcome of a game. So I go from 20% of volatility in hockey to 1.4% in basketball, or in other words, uh, basketball NBA is like 15 times more repeatable than hockey. And that's not based on anything other than just the scoring mechanisms of how the sport is set up. And, and we, you know, we've had people, we've had a lot of people ask us, um, well, are you guys going to do soccer or or football? You know, and you, you, you type in stick in AI sports picks and we're like, we're probably or AI sports betting. We're one of the first things that's going to pop up. And, and that's just not in the U S that's all over the world. So there's this huge football following who's looking for what we're doing. And then we filter it through this score fidelity idea. And it's like, okay, how, how good are we really going to be when there's one goal scored in a game or two goals scored in a game or no goals scored in a game? So we, ha- we haven't done hockey yet, but, but just the scoring mechanism alone has a huge impact on how repeatable and predictable a sport can be. In your opinion, then, are parlays a good bet? And listeners, what a parlay is, is when you have more than one bet Included. So if you go and you bet five dollars on one team, like we were talking before, plus three, and then you take another game that's you know minus four, and you put them both together, that's called a parlay. And you can do a two team, three team, six team, and you can get crazy with it. But do you think parlays are a good bet? If you want to light money on fire, parlays are a fantastic bet. <laughs> uh, I. It depends on what a good bet is. So parlays are not profitable, and over the long period of time, unless you absolutely get incredibly lucky and walk away you are going to lose money betting parlays now at the same time a good met a good bet might be you take five dollars on a sunday and you bet it on three or four nfl teams and you know that you're going to lose it and you're entertained the whole time watching those games and you don't care and it you know it's the same cost as as having a beer maybe that is a good bet but as far as like profitable and the ability to win money absolutely avoid parlays like the plague that the only caveat i have is um there are some permutation structures like a goliath or a heinz 57 where it's i i think a heinz 57 is six bets in all of the combinations of those six so it's one bet six ways and then it's two bets five ways and then it goes all the way down the tree until you have five single bets. And then I think a Goliath is the same thing for eight. And I think it's 247 bets. Don't, don't hold me to those numbers. But anyway, it's, it's a way to do a parlay where if you still you lose one leg, you're, you're not out of it. You can lose one leg and still make money. So like on a Goliath, for instance, you can win six out of eight and you're slightly profitable. If you win seven out of eight, you're doing really well. And if you win eight out of eight, you're doing great, but you are not going to get the same payout as a straight 
eight leg parlay. So it, it your, your ceiling is capped a little bit, but you can also lose one or two and still make money with it. And so doing something like that, when you do have a good strategy and you do have good analytics backing up your, your picks, um, I think it's worth experimenting with. I personally don't, don't bet parlays at all. Uh, I, I just think that, you know, it's and teasers too. I mean, the, the, the sports books are, they're just waiting for you to come in and they're waiting for you to win five out of six games. And they're waiting for you to say, Oh, I was only one game away or I was only one missed field goal away or whatever the reason is not even factoring in that on the other two games you won, you shouldn't have won because something fluky happened. And over, over the long term, it's a great way for the sports books to make money. You brought up something that reminded me. I live out here in Las Vegas about throwing five dollars down and being entertained for three NFL games. You know, people come out here to lose money. And if you're looking for the longest thing that you can do with money, it's betting on a game. If you go to blackjack, the hands over quick. A uh, pull the slot machine is seconds, crap game, the dice, everything is very quick. You can lose money very fast. But you can put five dollars on a game and sit around for two hours and enjoy your money for two hours before it goes bye-bye it's, it's, it's much quicker than or longer than any other thing you can bet. <laughs> yeah. And if you've, you know, and if you're getting a couple of drinks coming by during that, I, I don't know, do they check you to see how much you're playing it, at those sports, the sports books there? Yeah, they do. Before they give you drinks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, you know, obviously it's all factored in, but that's a great way to look at it. And even, a, you know, you can even bet sub dollar amounts too. So you can bet, five cents or 10 cents a leg on a, a, you know, a Goliath that's, that's eight teams or whatever. And that could carry on for days. Right. Exactly. So you can have a little bit of fun with it. What is the future of sports betting with AI? That is a great question. Um, what, so, so one of the things that, that not a lot of people know, but it, it's the, the only advantage we have is that sports books are not trying to predict the outcome of a game when they set a line they are trying to evenly split money on both sides of that line. And so what that means is if, you know, if you have a team, like you said, favored by three and they get half the money on plus three and half the money on minus three, then they take a 9% juice. Uh, They're going to make money regardless of the outcome of that game. And that's how there are are monstrosity casinos built in Vegas. uh, One of the many ways that they're built. What we're trying to do is we're trying to accurately predict the outcome of a game using uh, AI sports analytics. And so anytime that there's a difference between where Vegas has set the line, trying to split money and where we think the game is going to trend based on what the analytics are telling us, that creates a lean to one side or the other. And so a lot of times our percentages will be, uh, you know, 54% or 55% on this team covering the spread or on this game going under. So it's not huge, but it's a couple percent advantage over 50, 50, and, you know, and I don't have to talk to someone in Vegas to, to say how much Vegas was built on the stinking, you know, having one color off on a roulette wheel type of thing, or, or, you know, Vegas was built on one to 2%. So back to, to AI sports betting. One of the things that, that I think is going to be interesting is I'm, I'm not the first, there are going to be more guys that come out who have got algorithms and, as far as Vegas is concerned, I think their only way to combat it is to start to limit individual players who are winning too much money, just like they did to me. And they just cut you off and they just start to say, Hey, you, you know, you're not welcome here. You're a profitable sports better. See ya. And I, I think that it's going to continue for a long time because a lot of people don't have that kind of discipline. A lot of people are emotional. And even if you're following a good strategy, you, you know, it's incredibly hard to be disciplined with your bankroll enough to, to, to bet to the dollar amount on a specific game based on whatever strategy I'm using again and again and again and not chase and not use emotion and, and any of those other things that, that can start to make Vegas win essentially. So I, I think it continues. I think it gets better. Um, I I'm kind of intentionally naive to AI because I'm scared of what the world's going to be in a decade. So I'm trying to focus on like the one to two year (laughs) window. Um, But it, you know, back to chat GPT, it doesn't take, it doesn't take, if you play with it for more than five minutes, you'll see that, that a lot of what's coming out is junk. So AI is going to get better. Um, Sports are going to get more predictable. Lines are going to get sharper. Uh, People are going to cheat. You know, we're we're probably six months to a year away from our next big 
pro sports scandal of, of betting because people are stupid and they think, Oh yeah, I'm, you know, what, what's the worst that could happen? And then they get caught. And then it, so I'm sure that's already probably going on at some level or, or another. Uh, but I, I don't know. I think it, as, as far as I'm concerned, it continues as is for a while. As he said, you can get a 30 day free trial or you can subscribe at leans.ai. I'll put a link in the show notes. It's L E A N S dot AI. I will put a link in the show notes. Listeners also don't forget as an inspirational speaker that will inspire you to inspire others. My story of beating cancer against the odds will get you on the path to change your life. I promise you I can do that for you. Click the link in the show notes or go to TommyCanally.com. That's TommyCanally.com. Steve, thanks so much for taking some time and coming on the show and talking with me. Hey, you got it. Really enjoyed it. And that's going to do it for this episode of Before the Lights. I'm Tommy Canally, And until next time, everyone, a salute, a chin chin. <laughs>